the basic idea of most significant change is very simple. At the field level, or at the sort of at where the rubber is on, where, where the rubber hits the road in, 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 a, in a program or an initiative, stories can be generated by participants. There's a whole range of possible participants. In your case, I just arbitrarily put in what, what might be the levels in your case, maybe not. You might have to vary this. But so, so physicians, healthcare providers, patients, members in the community, talking about what's important, what's memorable, what's going on. This, these stories, so we call them stories because it's important that these are not just um, these are not just reports by some, like somebody that's doing some training of healthcare providers. That this is not just a, a statement of how well it's gone. It's that we want to really get a picture of what's actually happening there. So, what are people doing differently connected with the initiative? These stories are then collected and sent up to the next level in the organization where you would have, so it might be a supervisor, it might be a regional office, it might be a, a clinic. And then there's discussion at this level about which one of these stories really, gra really grabs this group in terms of its significance. And so on up the hierarchy. There may be several other hierarchies, there may be, there may be only one level. It depends uh, how you're using it. A lot of the questions that you may have about using this method, I can tell you the answer right now. The answer is going to be, it depends. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So you can, ha and so all the steps along the way are documented so that when you get to the highest level, you've got a, you've got a documentation that says what was important to the patients. Of all the things mentioned by the patients, what were selected as most significant by the, called a clinic. Then at the board or divisional or health authority level, of all the things that were important kind of at the management level, what jumped out at them? And, and at each stage, this is a crucial part of the methodology, to say what the reasoning was for the selection of the, uh, like why did, why did you think they were important, that story was important when you selected it. Really what you're doing is finding out what's memorable and important to your staff and colleagues and clients at each level. So it's getting those rich little nuggets of experience, things that are really happening at each of those levels and the value placed on the stories as you go up the hierarchy. First of all, you get real pictures of what's going on. So you get these, you get sort of something that you can't get with statistically representative data, with quantifiable data. So this is very much focused on qualitative data and really making pictures of what's going on. Secondly, it gives you a way to communicate between levels in an organization. So that it, at this level, you can communicate what's important to people at this level. So it kind of opens channels, it creates transparency, and it reinforces things that are valuable to the players in the various, playing the different roles in the organization. So these are the things you do with most significant change. You collect stories about the changes that people observe and experience relative to a particular initiative. Once you get these stories, you then process or analyze them to select the ch examples of the change that you, in your role, at your level and uh, in the organization, consider most important. This is, if you like, the crude or the classical model Almost no applications of the most significant change will strictly follow this particular <coughs> simplistic way of presenting. So uh, hence the emphasis on contextualizing it to your own needs and situation. 
the idea, though, is that you will discuss what other people think is important and put your own level of importance on it in your, at, with your own, with, at whatever your, depending on what your role is. And this brings this level, this kind of communication between people with different roles or different levels looking at the, these stories. Finally, um, uh, you, if, if you can set up a system like this, you can then develop a, an ongoing dialogue um, that tracks how things are going and what different role players are valuing at different stages um, of the initiative. You will also have the potential for finding out things that uh, need to be improved. This is a monitoring tool. It's a specific type of monitoring tool, monitoring specific type of data. So you're actually going to build capacity in using that tool for the people that are engaged in using it. Once you start to see what's considered significant at various levels, you may then be able to develop indicators of, of outcomes or of results. The, the most important thing for me is to know why you're doing this to start with. Because that will, that, will that will shape everything. Right? You may just want some examples. You just may want to put some little story examples in your annual report. That's all. So you know, you'll use the parts of most significant change that help you do that. Or you may want to engage in a full-fledged uh, organizational transformation. Either way, you'll use most, you'll, most significant change will be designed to serve that purpose. In order to ask people to tell stories, you need to give them some boundaries. And you need to decide what the stories are supposed to be about. Where, where are these stories to be occurring? And when, over what period of time, is the change are they to think of the change? So, you know, kind of paradoxically, people have more freedom where they, when they know where the fences are, you know, what they know what the boundaries are. It's important also, sort of more at the kind of, um, say, the methodological level uh, or at the um, technical level to decide um, how, who's going to collect the stories, how you're going to do that, you know, is it going to be in? Is it going to be in focus groups? Is it going to be in interviews? Is it going to be by an email request? And you need to set up the periodicity or when you're going to when you're going to do it. So here we're saying when means in what within what time period are you looking to ga gather to to met, to look at the change? And here you're going to say, okay, when or how often are you going to actually go out and collect these stories? Remember, the second level up was to select stories. So you, again, another d design decision, the most significant change, is who's going to read, discuss, and select the most significant stories from the batch that you've got. This can be a special group set up for this, or this can be what your management or your staff retreat, or, you know, I. Usually what um, I encourage organizations to do is build whatever method we're talking about for monitoring and evaluation, build it into what you already do. You know, try not, you know, the people, you and the people you work with probably are not going home every night saying, gee, I wish I had more to do today. And so you're not, people are not begging for you to come and fill up their day. Um, people all tend to be already, you know, stretched. So what you want to do is add value to the existing processes, not create more stuff for people to do. Uh, number five here, verifying uh, the, sto the selected stories. Once you start selecting stories, discussing them, writing up your reasons for selecting them, and sending them to somewhere else in the organization, you're now putting a lot of you know, eggs in that basket. It would be important, you'll decide this in your, own, in your own situation, but in many cases it's important to verify the accuracy and maybe 
up the quality of the story by getting some more information. So at some stage, it may be very helpful to verify the, the accuracy uh, of, the, of the, um, the change that's being uh, claimed in the story. Once you're doing this for a while, you've now got kind of a, a data set that you can play around with. You can do a lot of creative things with it. So you can actually, you can analyze, uh, you know, you can quantitatively um, analyze, you know, at a very superficial level, who's telling the stories, what are the stories about, by region, by division, by type of, by type of service. And you can also do content analysis. There are very, uh, stories of most significant change are very rich uh, source for doing quant content analysis to find out what kinds of, over time, what kinds of changes are seen as important by different groups and how is that connected to the kinds of uh, programming that are projects that the initiative is, um, is supporting. Remember I said about it's important to set the boundaries. What are the stories to be about? So this is uh, crucial, so you get the stories focused on the things that you want them focused on. The time period, sort of over what time period are, are, do you want to ask people to think about when they're generating their, when they're thinking about change? What's the unit of concern? Is it the community? Is it your clinic? Is it the entire division? Is it some other way of setting a boundary? So where are, so when, is the, when can the change have occurred? Where could it have occurred? And in what, in what domain of change could it have occurred? Okay, so um, it's important that the domain, the topic about which this, the change can be can described is clear and specific, yet that it's open enough that you're not directing people to, to choose what you think is important. So it's kind of that combination of clarity and fuzziness. It's important that the domain relate to the, to the objectives of your uh, initiative, that, uh, that the domains are framed in a way that's relevant to what you want to do with it, what you want to do with these stories, and that the people that you're expecting to tell you stories can understand. Can they understand what you mean when you name when you name the domain? On the case of whose stories to collect, uh, just in thinking about the workshop and how you might do this, uh, we came up with uh, with something with something like this, where depending on the domain of change you want to focus on, each domain of change Im implicates a particular actor. So that it, in the health system performance, it tends to be people delivering, you know, involved in, in, in delivery. In quality of care, it could be delivery and management, but it could also include clients and patients. So you could use this as kind of a planning uh, tool or a discussion guide, if you like, when you're planning your use of most significant change. Um, if, you know, which domains you want to focus on, who are the obvious people, you know, we, this may, you may, you may have your own version uh, or your own ideas about who would be include, who would the storytellers be in each, each uh, domain. And, and then you could do some planning as to how many stories you, need, you want to uh, collect and uh, the way, you know, where, you, where they might locate, where, they, where these respondents might be located. This tool is very important for you and you will be ready to take some time to set up and think about what you want to do and from who you need to collect stories. So here we put some example, for them. We, we can take uh, the first domain, health system performance. We put some targets, who you want to collect some stories from. Could be the physician, could be the healthcare professional. And after, you will need to ask yourself, is there any subdivision among those people? So do you want to interview, for instance, young physician? Do you want to interview senior physician? female, male, do you think that will make a difference in the story that you are going to collect? Um, if you have clinics in rural and urban area, do you think that makes a difference in the story that you are going to collect? So think about all the criteria to identify the most 
uh, pertinent respondent for your own project. So it, it just of example of sub uh, criteria. We mentioned the age, the gender. Um, I think, uh, ah, yes, if maybe you want to interview people who are dealing with vulnerable population. So it's some criteria that will, you will need to think about very um, ahead of time in the planning. So for the purpose of uh, this training, we prepared three interview guides. As mentioned, it's templates. So you will do uh, whatever we, you want to adapt them for your own uh, purpose. And uh, so three interview guides have been prepared. One, to target healthcare provider. <laughs> Second one is to target the patients, and the third one to capture information from your partner and a division, a GP for meeting. More or less, the interview guide are more or less the same. There is little change, and the change is related to the first question that is going to be asked to the respondent. The first question is for the, to identify the link between the respondent and the initiative. So if we are talking to a patient, that will be a little bit different from a physician. The involvement will be different. So is the reason why the first question will be different. Otherwise, the structure of the interview guide for the three targets are the same. And all the interview guide uh, includes five components. And I'm going to go through all of them with you uh, now. So this interview guide has been designed for face-to-face -face or Skype uh, phone interview. We have adapted this interview guide to be used for email or mail um, data collection process. And so you will find that in your uh, files also. Is that uh, should be the fourth tool that you have. It's an adaptation of this guide to, that you can send uh, by email to get self-written stories. So to start with the first component of the interview guide, it's just introduction and background about what a GP uh, for me initiative is, and a brief note about the most significant change approach. And that would be important to mention uh, all of that to all the respondents, and of course that will have more sense for the patients who may not be aware of the GP for me initiative. Second component is contact and background detail. Here we are going to capture information about the storyteller, but also on the interview process. And this information that you are going to capture about the interview process will be helpful when you are going to write your report and mention what has been done in terms of methodology. So the first line is the interview code. I'm not going to deal right now with how to code each interview. We have a coding guide. If we have a chance to discuss it a, li a little bit later, I will do it. But what is very important to keep in mind at that stage is that each story should have a unique code. And uh, you will see later on how we can do that and identify a way to have a single uh, code for each story. Next, next line, storyteller name. Is the right of the respondent to remain anonymous? So if the person is comfortable to have his name recording in the interview guide, that's fine. If the, one, if the respondent prefer to stay anonymous, leave it that right. It's not a big deal at all. And if the person prefer to stay uh, to remain anonymous in your uh, report, you can invent, create a false name for this respondent that will make the story a little bit lively. And we just put a note that the respondent didn't prefer to stay anonymous and that you create a name for this particular respondent. Interviewer name. It's important if you have to follow up anything with the story that has been collected. And if the interviewer has to go back to the respondent to capture more information, you, you will need to know who has collected the story. Type of interview, next slide. Uh, please record if the interview has been performed face to face or by phone and Skype. And as mentioned earlier, this information <coughs> can appear in your methodology. Uh, and like that, you will be able to say, okay, for the purpose of the evaluation process, we have collected 30 stories uh, 
uh, among physicians and 10 stories among patients, and most of them has been done face to face. Or half of them has been done face to face, and a quarter by phone, and a quarter by Skype. But you can mention that in your methodology. Next slide, location of interview. Here, I would like you to specify where did you uh, perform the interview. And again, you will be able to notify that in your methodology uh, section. And hopefully, uh, we want all the location to be confidential, safe, and, uh, and yeah, comfortable to, to respond and take the time to respond to, to you. Age. Ideally, uh, <laughs> if you can collect the age of the respondent, is perfect. If the respondent is not very comfortable with, it, with that, maybe you can ask her age range. And again, it's nice if we can, this information can show up in the story. So I don't know, uh, Paul, a physician, age uh, 30, years, 30 years, years old, says that blah, 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 blah. Because depending on the age of the respondent, the perception of the change will make difference for you. Uh, gender or sex of the storyteller, that would help also. Profession of storyteller. Uh, name of organization, practice, or institution and division. And the last line is to record the date and duration of the interview. Again, here the length of interview will be helpful for you when you are going to write your methodology section. You will be able to say, okay, here we have collected 30 stories, and on average, the length of the interview was uh, 34 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever is it. So next, I will take question at the end of the interview if you don't mind. Next session, confidentiality, a very, very important uh, component as you are all aware. And there are three <coughs> questions that you will need to ask. Do you, the storyteller, want to have your name on the story? Yes or no, he has the right to refuse. Consent to using your story for publication? Yes or no? consent to record the interview. We didn't discuss that with Catherine and uh, Lorraine if you record, if you had recorded your interview, I don't think so. But it's an option that you might want to consider that can help you when you are going to write the stories to ensure that you didn't forget any details about the story. But if you do so, you will need to ask the permission for doing it. And then now, the core of the interview guide, the question. So all the interview guide targeting healthcare provider, partner, division, a GP for me team, and patients have five questions. And as I mentioned earlier, it's the, only, the first one is the only one who is going to change. So first question for the healthcare provider, how are you being involved with a GP for me? So here what we want to know is the links between the respondent and the project. And we have listed here some probing questions uh, to ensure that the respondent is going to cover what we want to know. So the purpose is not to ask any single probing question. So we need to react depending on what the person is telling you. But the idea is to collect information about to what extent the storyteller has been involved with the project, since how long. Someone who has been working with, for the project for the last two years will have a different perspective than someone who has started two months ago. If the respondent is uh, work full-time, part-time, if you can describe a little bit his involvement, and very important role and responsibilities of the respondent. So if he can describe a little bit what he is doing and linking with the GP for me initiative. Second question. To be honest with you, we have a debate about this one with Terry, and you will see if you want to keep it or remove it. From my point of view, I think it's an important question, especially when you are going to deal with the patients. And, uh, but you will, need, you will see if you want to keep it for the physician, and LSK provider, and partner. So the question is, looking back over the past 12 months, 18 months, two years, you adapt that based on your own project. So looking back over the past 12 months, what in your experience are the most significant change in terms of 
And here you can identify a particular domain you want to collect information on. So it's a way to approach to say, okay, think about different changes. And then the next question is, could you please let me know what is the most significant one? And here the respondent had to choose one. So the risk of keeping the question number two is that maybe the respondent will come with a huge list of change that he has noticed because maybe he has a work plan in mind and he will maybe mention too many changes and we don't want neither to spend time on that. So that will be very up to you to see if you want to keep that, if you want to test it on the field and see how people react to that. But the idea is to identify some changes and then select one. And when the respondent has identified one change, the most significant one, again, there is a list of probing questions. So the idea is not to ask each single question, but it's just questions that help you to capture all the details that you need to write the story. And the most important here will be to capture information about what was the situation before, a very full description of what was the situation before, what the situation now, and how the change occurred, uh, when, how, um, why. So there is a list of questions to capture all the details about the change and make the, the respondents really uh, telling you what's happened concretely through an example. Next question, number four, what makes the change important? So here is really the perception of the respondent that you are going to capture to know from his point of view or from her point of view why the change is important. And then uh, last question, do you want to add anything else? So you just open the floor uh, if the respondent want to say anything else. And the next table is for the story collector. And the idea when using MSC is to collect information also from the story collector. And there is a space here to put some comments. And we ask the story collector to summarize the most significant change and why the change is important for the respondent from his or her understanding. And then as a usual interview, we will need to close the interview. Thanks the respondent for the time that he has offered you. And if you wish, you can mention the next step, what you are going to do with the story. So let's say you figure out how to get the stories. Uh, you've got the stories. What happens next? The stories get discussed by, uh, by some group of participants, either hierarchically or laterally. And um, the process there is to decide is to read the stories, understand them, discuss them, and decide which ones represent the most important, the most significant change at that particular time from that set of stories. It can be helpful to set up a set of criteria and the logic that you're going to follow for selecting stories. And remembering, of course, that this process is an iterative process that you will share the selection and you will share your reasons of selection with, uh, with other parts of the organization. And so the, the chances are that you'll be, the, the, first, the first round of stories won't be the stories that you really wanted, that a second and third round will be necessary before you build the capacity for you really figure out what kinds of stories you want, what you want in the stories, and uh, that'll, part of that will come out of this discussion on uh, selecting the stories. It might be a good idea at early on um, to develop your own sort of story quality improvement checklist. So these are the kinds of things that, uh, that, I, would think, uh, might, that I would think might be on it um, that you'd look for in a story is that you have the, that's clear the st as in the template, the storyteller's link to the project or to the service or the, the church that's being examined. And these, these three things here, two, three, and four, are really trying to simplify the idea of what makes a good meaty story where you can really see people in context and see things change. So 
What were things like before the change, number two? What did change? What was the change? So, in other words, what are people doing differently now? Four may be an, may be an option in some cases. So, what brought about this change? And how did people respond initially? So in the, so in the physician talking about going into these sessions, yeah, the, they would have something to say about what, where, where was the trigger for or the pressure for change coming from and what did I think of it at the start and then how did I modify my thinking sort of idea. Probably if you're talking to patients, that probably wouldn't be a component. And then finally, the significance of change. So something, something along these lines you might sort of develop for yourself. Um, when you're trying to improve the quality of change and you've looked at some stories now, sorry, improve the quality of stories, and you know what you want in the stories. You know they have to live and that you have to be able to see people. And I, to me, that's what the stories that were selected were often selected for the fact that they actually they gave you an insight into something going on somewhere. So the big message that I would want you to note here is that this is, this, is the magic, this is the magic potion for making your stories work. Talk about actors doing things, treating uh, organizations relating to each other, people working together across boundaries, I think you, you will collect stories about that uh, when you are going to interview you, you, some patients uh, and ask them questions about the quality of care. And maybe one of the most significant changes that they are going to raise is that now they can have an appointment fairly quickly. Maybe something that you, you, can, uh, you can see. Mm. One, that was the link between qualitative and quantitative data. And uh, when you have your selected stories, uh, you can go to existing documentation report and, uh, and, and bring more information and bring quantitative information. For instance, uh, one of the stories was talking about the orphan uh, patients. And if it is the most significant story that you are going to select, maybe you can go back to your data and say, okay, for, for the last two years, uh, X uh, number of uh, physicians retired and uh, X amount of new physicians come and uh, took over the patients. So you can bring data uh, when you are going to write your reports. And in terms of representativity, in order to avoid to have one perspective uh, of people uh, selecting the story, what can be very nice is to have a large panel of people uh, around the selecting process meeting. So partner, beneficiaries, physician, and not only people based on their office, but people really on the ground who face the reality uh, of the project. See, on that particular issue, the point is not that you're selecting the most significant change in the cosmos or, you know, <laughs> forever. It's for those people around that table at that particular time are saying this change is most important to us of these stories. So it's telling, it's not a universal judgment on the story. It's a reflection of where the people around the table are at in relation to that story. You know, so it's kind of part, it's not kind of, it's part of the picture. <laughs>